My name is Hubert Baumeister and this is a two-part video showing you how to create a Beeple process, use that Beeple process and within that Beeple process call another process. In the first part what we're creating is a very simple Beeple process that appends hello to its import, just it's a, a small hello world program that we programmed previously in uh, Java. Now we will do this using the business process execution language. To start is we create first a project. Now this project is a SOA project and it's a Beeple module. Uh, we call it Hello World Beeple. And we finish it. In the first step within that Beeple process, although the wizard already sh showed us uh, a Beeple process and we can close it because we don't need it this in the moment, is so the first step is to create a WSDL file for that service we want to offer through the Beeple process. So in process files we click on new and we click on WSDL document. And we call it hello world. The target namespace is also HTTP Hello World WS. Uh, we can at this point create a concrete uh, WSDL service because we are going to use an RPC literal binding and we don't have complex data types. But if you have complex data types, then it's best to create an abstract WSDL document and generate all the elements that the wizard generates and then add your own elements after you have added uh, the necessary types. But as I said here at the moment we can work with the defaults here. So we have hello world operation, we just call it hello world. It is request response, we have a string as an input and we have a string as an output and uh, we want to have these message part names for the input and output to be different to avoid uh, the generation of a holder class for an input output parameter. Now here we have generate partner links automatically and this because we are now doing uh, WSDL for a Beaver process we actually say that this should be done. Then we have the information on the binding, that is fine, and we finish. Now we have generated a WSDL that offers a port type with one operation that takes a string and returns a string. So we can use this in our Beeple process. Now we open our Beeple process again and we import the WSDL document. In this case it's quite easy to drag and drop this to this point to the left side. To the left side is all those operations offered by the Beeple process. Later on when we put something on the right side it's all what we uh, what the Beeple process calls all the operation. So we have here our partner link that is where we get our request from and where we have to send our answer. Now we have to actually receive first the request and we have to reply to that request. So we have received, now we have to say to what, where we receive uh, the message from, from which external partner link. And we do this by clicking on this envelope icon here and drawing it or connecting it to the operation that this one we want to receive matches it from. And similar, similarly we do this here for the answer. So now still you can see there are uh, errors here and that is because we have to do still something. We can click on this and we see what is missing and we see here is a variable attribute and so on is missing. Um, but instead we just click on double click on here and then we have the name 
that is the partner link, that is the operation we want to use, and we, then we have to have an input variable. Now here we can just create this input variable, and it's called hello world in. And that was it. And on the other side we have the reply, and that is a normal response, and we create an input va uh, output variable, output, and say OK. So it takes some time, but uh, soon these errors uh, vanish. And uh, you can see here uh, no errors, but here's still a warning. And we have here that the hello world in part one is not used. Actually, what we have to do is we have to assign the input part to the output part. And to do this, we use the assign operation here. And we double click on the assign. And then we get an editor here that allows us to edit uh, the assignments. We have on the left hand the variables we can copy into, and we want to copy something here into the output. And here on the left hand side, we can uh, select the one we want to copy from. So if we want to have an echo service, then we just copy from the hello world uh, in part to the hello world out part. And as you see, they, they still have the same name, so in the wizard, uh, it, it didn't accept my uh, the change into input and output. But that's fine for the moment. So that is a direct copy. But what we want to actually want to have is we want to concatenate this. So we delete this link with the delete key and then we uh, look for operations like here for string and we can have here an operation that concatenates two strings. And uh, the first string of the concatenation is of course uh, or the second string is our input and the first string is a string literal so we go to the strings and we select string literal and the order is a little bit wrong this string literal should contain the value hello and a blank and we take this to the first parameter and what we want to have is that the result goes into the hello world out So, we can save the process now, we can go back here to design mode and see our process. Uh, we can actually check the process when we go here on the people file and say check XML, this is a, a check for, uh, for well-formed XML and here it checks for valid XML and we don't have any errors and that's a good sign. But um, not a necessary sign that everything works. So now we have um, people module. This module we cannot really deploy directly. Instead, we have to deploy this as a so-called composite application. To do this, we create a new project. We are in the SOAR project, and now we choose composite application. We call it hello world up and we finish it and now what we're just doing is we take grab the module the people module and drag it to this composition editor and we can then say build the project now the application is the one we can actually now deploy. Now let's see if this application works. First of all we uh, uh, try to find this application in our admin console. As you will notice it will not appear in the web application. It's not a standard web application anymore. Thus it also does not appear in the web services. It does, however, appear in the uh, JBI service assembly. And there we have our Hello World app. 
A very easy way to test the application is that in the Hello World app and in the test field here we create a new test case and we call it test hello world we say next and here we have to select uh, people document a uh, WSDL document we have to select an operation in this WSDL document the operation run the test and we get actually a template for the SOAP message to be sent out and we replace this by world and we can actually then save and click on the test and run the test now what happens is that there will be an error message the test will fail here and the reason is that we didn't specify what we have as an expected output now since this is a complicated SOAP message usually what one does is one first checks that the right output is generated and then takes that output as the expected output so this is what uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, NetBeans is asking from us to put the output result into the expected output and we assume now that everything is correct and we say yes but we, of course we have to check this we look into the output and then say we have here our expected hello response yes this looks very nice so that is the expected output and now we can run the tests again and we can see that uh, our test is green So in the next step we want to write a Java client against these people web service. Uh, we already did this and the only interesting part here will be how to get the WSDL of the web service or people service we have just created. We have to look now in the WSDL file and see what kind of port address we have used. So we're going down here to SOAP address and then to location. And this is really important. Here the address that you put in a WSDL file for a beep process, that is actually the address this process will be available with the Java web services we saw that Glassfish is replacing the SOAP address by its own version of the SOAP address here actually what you write in here that actually counts so you can write define your own path here you can define your own uh, a port number here now usually the par uh, uh, the URL generated works fine with the exception of that we don't know what is the HTTP default port. Now how do we find out about that one? And uh, it is 9080 but if you are unsure then you can look into services in JBI in the binding components and here you see in the HTTP binding and here you go into properties and finally you see here default HTTP port number and that is 9080. Okay, now let's test this that this is our uh, uh, correct. So we copy the WSDL here and we paste this into here uh, a new tab in our browser. We have to replace the dollar HTTP port by the just the number 9080 we found out. And at the end, we add a question mark WSDL. So that is a convention that on the port where a service is available, if it produces a WSDL, then you can actually send a GET request with question mark WSDL and you get the WSDL. So if that gives us the WSDL, then we also know that our service is working.